Chances are you've seen a thing or two on television that's changed your life. But have you ever seen something on television that could save your life? Well, wait till you see this. Presenting the 17 most popular ways to fall out of the sky and how to avoid them. It's a pretty unique title, and it's a pretty good description of the most unique flying videos you'll ever see. Hosted by Bob Hoover, the 17 most popular ways to fall out of the sky and how to avoid them contains life-saving information for pilots of all experience levels. You won't get any questions about a 16-point roll from me, but the questions you should get are answered in these great flight review tapes. Finally, here's a series of instructional videos that does more than instruct, it entertains, increasing your retention of the facts presented. In 17 ways, you get action, excitement, state-of-the-art computer graphics, actual incident footage, and realistic flight situations. In other words, everything that's missing from other flight review videos. The philosophy behind these videos is simple. To err is human. To watch someone else err and learn from it is smart. 77% of all accidents are due to pilot error. 17 Ways focuses on the top 17 causes of these accidents, according to NTSB statistics. Each video dramatically recreates flight situations to illustrate how it's human factors that influence the decision-making process, leading to dangerous circumstances. But you're not just a spectator here. You're actually participating in the flight experience, going along for the ride as pilots make error after error after error. Then unlike real life, you get a second chance to pinpoint the mistakes that were made and review how to avoid them. Our goal is to help you spot the warning signs of trouble before they become crises. Part of what makes 17 Ways so unique are your hosts. Along with Bob Hoover, you'll have an unparalleled staff of aviation experts as your guide. Test pilots, flight surgeons and instructors from both the Naval and Air Force Test Pilot Schools and the Institute of Aviation Safety at USC. Another thing that makes the 17 Ways video so unique is how comprehensive they are. As thorough as a pre-flight inspection, you're covering all the bases with four complete videos. Pre-flight preparation and takeoff, cruise and en route, approach and landing, and your body in flight. The United States Air Force uses these videos extensively in their aero clubs, and we received the prestigious Laurel Award from Aviation Week in Space Technology for setting a new standard in aviation safety training tools. And here's what other people are saying about 17 Ways, the most entertaining and well-produced video on accident prevention to date. Definitely a tape your non-pilot friends and family will enjoy, Private Pilot. It is unlikely pilots will view these tapes without recognizing themselves in at least one of the 17 vignettes about poor decision making, AOPA Pilot. See if I should purchase a set and require every flight review candidate to watch and discuss them with the instructor. FBO should require that renters of aircraft watch the entire series as a condition of renting a plane from them. Southwest Aviation Report. 17 Ways makes a great gift for pilots of all experience levels or for anyone who's interested in learning to fly. The videos also fit nicely in a stocking. Even if you've got 10,000 hours of experience, you're guaranteed to learn something new in these videos or remember something important that may have slipped your mind. We believe no pilot should be without them. If you recall, in our first segment, we met the doctor and his wife preparing to take off in his twin Cessna late in the afternoon. Where are we going? Over the clouds. You said you didn't want to fly at night. I don't. Mojave is that way. If you want to get there before dark, we have to fly direct. Over the clouds? Hey, I'm taking my IFR exam next week, and I can navigate. Besides, we have an RNAV and two engines. What could happen? Scanning for traffic. It sounds simple enough, like nothing more than having good eyes and diligently keeping them open. Unfortunately, for several reasons, it is not so simple. For one thing, an aircraft on a collision course will likely be the most difficult to spot. It will appear as stationary as a bug spot on the windshield and will probably attract less attention. The moving target, the one easy to see, is probably not a factor. In this case, for example, the upper airplane will cross ahead of the lower one. Notice that the bearing between them will be constantly changing. This means that the pilot will have to turn his head to follow the target as it appears to move across his windshield and no collision will occur. A moving target indicates a non-collision situation. This is an example of a collision course. Notice that in order to reach the same spot in the sky at the same time, 
each airplane's bearing to the other will remain constant. This means that the target will remain stationary in the windshield and will not tend to attract the pilot's attention. A stationary, growing target indicates a potential collision. Even perfect scores on the eye chart may not be sufficient for this problem. Perhaps more important is to learn how to use one's eyes, however good they may be, and proper technique will take practice. First, understand that the segment of airspace where you are most likely to hit something is the forward 60-degree arc at your own altitude. Second, keep in mind that your eyes see only when they are not in motion, not looking around. Third, remember that the only part of your eye that can see tiny spots, like traffic at a distance, is the very center of the visual axis. Visual acuity degrades rapidly beyond that axis. Therefore, effective scanning requires a series of short, regularly spaced eye movements bringing successive areas of sky into the central visual field. Each movement should not exceed 10 degrees, and each should dwell for at least one second. And be wary of the impulse to relax. In the vicinity of some of our modern high-speed aircraft, a lot can happen in a few brief seconds. This actual footage was shot from an F-16 fighter flying over the desert at more than 400 knots. Pay attention now. That's a single-engine Cessna, almost close enough to read the end numbers. Let's watch it again. Well, I might the highway. I might got a truck there or something. Keep this picture in mind the next time you're operating around military operations areas or restricted areas. Again, Pick out a piece of sky within that forward 60-degree arc, fixate it briefly, then make a series of similar quick fixations across the arc, dwelling long enough to clear each piece of sky. Other segments of the sky need to be cleared periodically, too, but most critical is the collision zone ahead. Fourth, we need to be aware of the potential for what's called focus trapping. For each of us, there is a distance to which our eye will tend to focus when at rest. Most of us with normal visual acuity have a resting focus at about three to six feet. You can, by this simple test, determine your resting focus. Stand behind a fine mesh window screen and view something, a sign or an eye chart perhaps, at some distance beyond. As we move within a few feet of the screen, our resting focal distance, our eyes will tend to focus on the mesh, blurring the objects beyond. This can be a serious problem if the distance is the same as the distance from your eyes to the windshield. If the windshield is spotted, wet, or crazed, your eyes will have a tendency to focus on the bug spot and miss the airplane a couple of miles away. Therefore, always start your flight with a clean windshield. Don't let that bug spot attract more of your attention than the approaching mid-air collision. A short resting focus creates an additional hazard. The next time you're at an airport, watch a departing aircraft. If you keep it focused, you'll be able to track it until it's nothing but a speck. But just blink or look away for a moment, and then try to reacquire that target. The difficulty here is due to your focus having pulled back to its resting distance. As our skies become increasingly crowded, it's important to muster all available help to spot targets early. Put the eyes of your passengers to work and use air traffic control for traffic advisories. Turn on your strobe and landing lights, especially in areas of high collision potential. And don't forget that the only really effective anti-collision devices in any airplane are your own two eyes. If they remain in the cockpit for more than a few seconds at a time, they are less than useless. Keep heads up and eyes out. <laughs>